Ja, moin zusammen, hier ist wieder Danny von Starstream. Es geht weiter mit der A10-2-Kampagne mit Iron Flag. Ähm, unser Pilot äh, freut sich jetzt hier auf die nächste Lektion und hier auf äh, die weitere Einführung der Navigationssysteme. Das ist wohl heute dran. Ja, ähm, los geht's. One rolling. So, ich glaube, wir sollen auf 10.000 Fuß aus auch irgendwie steigen. Schauen, was der Flugplan sagt. Ja, alles klar. Ähm, müsste ich einmal nur den richtigen Punkt hier auswählen, würde ich sagen. Ähm, das 4 ist denn BK1. Ist das Mopa? Ja. Der müsste gleich vorne sein. Schauen, wie weit er weg ist. Da vorne ist er. Okay. Da ist er auf dem TED. Auf dem Tactical Awareness Display. Und da vorne sehe ich ihn auch. Okay, Kermit, push Nels Parcher on Uniform. I know it's a lot of jumping between different freaks. Perhaps we should go over using preset channels in one of the upcoming sorties. That sounds handy. Okay, let me know when you have your uniform up on departure. Departure. Uh, I've already missed something. Ne, das ist Departure. Oh. Äh. Uh, 385400. 400. So, gucken, nochmal kontrollieren. 385. 385, nicht 8. Ja, das mag ich nicht so gerne haben, wenn ich gleichzeitig irgendwo hingucken muss. Ich hätte einfach auch auf Autopilot vorschalten können, aber egal. One is ready. Departure is set on uniform. No, departure. Double one flight is with you over Apex, climbing for 10,000 feet. Double one, no is departure, radar contact. Clear to resume mode navigation. Clear for own navigation, double one. Alright, let's climb to Angel 10, speed up and maintain 220 and hit. One, climbing to Angels 10 and maintaining 220 indicated. Okay, auf 10.000 sollen wir auf 220 beschleunigen. Geht los. Alright, Kermit, on the way to Moffa, let's go over some of the differences between the Alpha and Charlie concerning your navigation systems and how you use them for. Wait for it. Navigation. As you probably noticed, there are quite a few. <laughs> a firm. The left panel looks similar. Engine controls too. But almost everything else in the cockpit, including the stick, is different. It took quite some time in the sim to get a handle on that. Yeah, about that stick, which is taken from the Viper, by the way. It's going to be imperative to the course of this training to learn ho tasks in such a way that when I say TMS up short, or pinky switch, pinky switch, center, as 
Das würde ich gerne noch mal hören. Das ist zwar ein bisschen lame, aber es ist cool. Read it all. Nope. Never read all of it. Nope. Got bored to death on the third page of Sis. I can't blame you, bro. But there are some true jewels hidden between all the bench test pages. We'll come back to that. Okay. Okay, so just below the CDU, you will find the AAP, where you will power up the CDU. Below are handy for quickly displaying CDU info about your steer point, waypoint, or current position, and for determining whether you will be using the waypoint database for your flight plan, mark points, or all of it. Take a look at these. Yo. Okay, sounds easy enough. Level 1, contact Blackjack at 377.8. 377. Kermit, I've got this. Stand by. Roger, double one switching. Good day. See ya. Follow me over to 377.8 and I'll explain in a bit. Roger, Kermit, I've got this. Stand by.
Ja, noch 1,2 Meilen, dann können wir auch turnen. Der müsste dann ja... Waypoint 2 ist... Keine Ahnung, hier irgendwo. Vielleicht müsste ich ihn ja sehen, ne? Weil wir sind ja hier auf Mission und... Ähm, ich dachte eigentlich, dass ich ihn sehen müsste. Okay, ähm, ich gehe mal aufs Waypoint 2. Das müsste dann... 0, 1... Verarschen. Jetzt sehe ich das hier mal. 0, 1, 2. Und 2 ist irgendwo hier. Warning, Autopilot. Ja, ich weiß. Wir müssen ein bisschen turnen. Wo ist er denn? Da hinten. Auch schon eine geile Map. Schon cool aus. Why would I want to change anchor point from bullseye to another waypoint? 
Imagine you're working with ground troops and you want to be able to quickly locate targets called by them. You may want to set their position as an anchor point. Or you're working with assets from other countries that don't normally use MGR escorts. Say, for example, some French jets or maybe helicopters. Then you want to choose a waypoint that is common for both of you as the anchor point. You want more examples? Nope, we can move on. Okay. Okay, the following two buttons are mutually exclusive as they both use the CDI and range indicator on the HSI. The first one will make the thin bearing needle, also known as the bearing pointer 1, point to the tack end station that you have tuned into on the tack end panel. The second one will show you the glide slope information for the ILS localizer on the ADI. Okay. Alright, let's tune our tack end into groom like at this time. So using the channel select knob for the tack end, now choose one eight X-ray. After you have done that, go ahead and check how pressing the tack end button will change the way in which your HSI and HUD behave. There is no point in doing the same for ILS as we're too far away from any airport. But once you're good to go, press the steer point button again and let me know when we can move on. Okay. Um, um, 18X war das 18 Ach, 18, nicht 80 18 X und Terkan okay So, okay, dann kriegen wir den Tarkan, das Tarkan-Signal. Das ist da. Warning, Autopilot. Ja, ist ja gut. Und der äh, Steer Point, also Waypoint 2 ist da. Wenn ich das richtig verstanden habe, ich schalte mal kurz um auf die 3. Ja, Waypoint 2, Waypoint 3. Das ist. Genau, das ist die Nadel für die Waypoints. Eins, zwei, ah, ich sehe es ja auch im Hut. Äh, sollte ich jedenfalls. Äh, wo ist mein, da hinten ist mein Waypoint. Okay, äh, der Point, der ist genau vor mir. Okay. Okay, Steer Point und Tacken, ja, zeigt jetzt da irgendwo hin. Alles klar. Tarkan checkt the behavior of the HSI needles. Das habe ich gerade gemacht. Äh. Ten ask. Nee, ich will ihm nichts asken. Wieso kann ich ihm jetzt nicht sagen? Can I get the Tarkan channel again, please? Sure. The Tarkan is going to be one. gemacht. All right, I'm ready. Okay, cool. We only have a few things left that we need to cover on the NMSB, so there's a switch called the PTR switch. It's in the middle of the panel and this will stow or enable the yellow pitch bank steering bars and the course warning flag on the ADI. There are also two lights on the right of the panel. They are for indicating the activation of UHF and FM radios homing function, respectively. These features make your radios an additional source of navigation by homing in on the signal transmitted on whatever frequency you have dialed in. This is a handy feature which is most commonly used during CSAR missions. Anything else on the NMSV, or can we move on? Yeah, what about 
about the tizzle button? Shit, forgot about that one. So, tizzle, well, we don't use it anymore. Raj? Another thing which I should have mentioned earlier is the difference between a waypoint and a steer point. So, the CDU can store up to 2,050 waypoints, but unless one of them is selected as your steer point, no steering or navigational data will be displayed in your HUD, TAD, or HSI. So, in a nutshell, the steer point is the waypoint or mark point you currently have selected, making it your destination. Make sense? Yo. Absolutely. Right on. Okay, another new feature for the Charlie is autopilot. Actually, we should have covered it in the beginning, as it's very handy for you to fly straight and check all your instruments as I describe them, but it seems you've already figured it out. Actually, we had it on the Alpha. What? The autopilot. Last, he was introduced on the later versions of the A-10A. Roger. Anyhow, it's on my list, so we need to go through it. So, fireworks here, it's as simple as it gets. The autopilot switch is located just below the throttle set on the lazy control panel and has three basic functions that will enable you to keep your current altitude, heading, or both. Let's go through the autopilot functions one by one. Ready? Yo. Can't wait. <laughs> so starting with the basic mode, which you're going to find pretty useful for cruising, we need to make sure that we're flying straight and level or pretty near it. Then we'll put the autopilot switch in the middle position, mark ELTHDG for altitude and heading hold, and press the button mark engage and disengage located just to the left of it. You can also use the button on the left throttle. One last thing before I forget, Warning, you should make sure the jet is pretty well trimmed out before you set the autopilot. If you're too far out of trim, it will make the autopilot disco, which is a bit annoying. And with that, go ahead and get the autopilot and let me know once you got her on. You know, this thing. Autopilot is engaged. This is the autopilot is spinning. You'll see the indication that the autopilot is on on the left side of the HUD and you should get the chime in the helmet indicating that your autopilot is engaged. The mode is useful for cruising, especially if you fly in the lead position or are in route formation. It should go without saying, but never use any autopilot mode when flying in close formation as a wingman. Great! On to the second mode. Place the autopilot switch in the forward position, marked pass. Okay, done that. Five degree climb and autopilot is back on. Good. This mode will hold the desired path we're heading while allowing you to put the aircraft into a climb or descent. Path holds will not hold bank and does not like roll, so always make sure that the aircraft is well trimmed. Okay, let me know when you want to move on to the third and final mode. Blind? Also the third mode, okay. Two is ready. Right on. This time we're going to force the autopilot to disengage without hitting any button. I want you to gently but firmly push the 
know it's over and you should feel the autopilot try to right the aircraft initially, then it gets up and ticks off. Do that now. So I machen? Pull the nose over until the autopilot disengage. Ach so, yeah, yeah, I weiß. Habe ich schon mal ausprobiert. Das heißt so. Warning, autopilot. Genau. Okay, it disconnected. Drehen wir mal wieder auf Waypoint 
Wir sind ja noch gar nicht angekommen bei, bei zwei, oder? Also wirklich. Aber gut, noch lass das machen. Wo ist er denn? Das zwei, drei sehe ich hier gar nicht. Das interessiert mich jetzt aber gerade, wo der ist. Okay. Uh, turn to watch Breakpoint 3. Disengage. Autopilot. Breakpoint 3 müsste da hinten sein, genau. One's on the new course. Ready to continue. Good. You will see that the bearing needle points directly towards waypoint three. However, the middle part of the arrow is way to the left. This is a course deviation indicator, which tells you how closely you are following the desired course. Since we turned long before reaching waypoint two, we are left of the desired flight path, and the eye is to the right from the bearing needle. Don't worry about it too much, as we'll cover it in tomorrow. Actually, it may be that your CDI is all the way to the right. If that's the case, just switch your waypoint back to 2 and then return to waypoint 3. Now the CDI should be on the correct side. It's all connected with the waypoint attributes and as I've said, this is for tomorrow's training. Uh, where was I? Ah uh, yes, the two dots to the left and the right are used to show you how far away from the desired course you currently are and the scale can be in the waypoint trip. Now on to the two knobs below the HSI. The left one is called the heading set knob, and it moves a heading marker around the compass. Good the marker looks like two closely set white squares. You can use it to mark a number of things like the wind direction or desired attack heading. It's not connected to any other instruments and has to be set manually. Go ahead and check it now. Let me know when you're ready to move on. Seems quite handy. The second knob is the course set knob, right? Correct. It allows you to set the selected course in the window on the top right and move the course arrow around the compass card. You'll want to use it when setting up for landing or if you want to arrive at a specific waypoint coming from a certain direction, which we will cover and talk about when we get to the waypoint of trip. Copy that. And the numeric window on the top left is the range indicator. Stay you know. firm, given a nautical mile. So the last thing we need to cover here are the two small triangles just next to the aircraft symbol and along the intended course line. They indicate the course the aircraft will fly to or away from the selected TACAN station or steer point. Ready for the next part? Ach so, okay, das war erstmal eine gute Frage. Aber jetzt zeigt er den Steerpoint an und das müssten nämlich ein paar mehr sein, nämlich. Genau, es müsste. Also er zeigt mir hier an, ja, 78. Und jetzt müsste er sich da auch drauf eingependelt haben. Okay, wir sind ja aber hier Tarkan und das Tarkan-Signal ist anscheinend näher dran. Ich schätze mal, dass das ja auch der Flughafen ist. Da müsste so 30 Meilen weg sein. Okay. Yes, two is good to go. 
Alright man, now that we've got some of the things up front figured out, let's move over to the right console and dip into the CDU, starting with the AAP panel, which controls it. Sounds good. Alright, so let's move over to the AAP panel now, which you're going to find just below the CDU. We'll start with the knob on the right, known as the page select dial. By default, this should be set to the other position, which enables data input into the CDU, while the other three positions are for read only. These selections will allow minor changes to what is displayed, but you would be unable to edit anything. So the important thing to remember here is, if you want to change any waypoint settings or attributes, this knob has to be in the other position. Copy? Yo. Yep. Other for display, and the rest is for data editing. Got it. Whoa, let's back it up there, high speed. Other is for editing, and all the remaining selections are for display. You had it backwards. Sorry about that. I copied all, but my mouth is quicker than my brain sometimes. Well, so long as we got it now. Okay, so now let's go ahead and check the position and steer settings like rotary aisle. In the position setting, you'll see a lot of useful information displayed on the CDU and CDU repeater if you have a pulled up on an MFCD. Position will display your current location in both lat long and MGRS. Oh, okay. Magnetic variation, altitude, and outside air temperature. You can cycle between indicated true and ground speed here as well as Celsius and Fahrenheit for the temperature. Any questions at this stage? Das ist cool. Okay, ja, zur CDU habe ich einige Fragen, deswegen werde ich hier mir auch ein paar Sachen erklären lassen. Yeah, could you tell me a bit more about the MGRS? Yeah, sure, I'd be happy to. I'm guessing you don't use it too much in the civilian side, so you may have gotten a little bit rusty on that front. I'll actually take this opportunity and we'll go over two systems, UTM and MGRS. So UTM is a grid square 100 by 100 kilometers across and consists of a number from 1 to 60 and a letter. It wasn't precise enough for our needs though, so MGRS was introduced. The way MGRS works is pretty straightforward. The first set of digits determines how far the chosen point is to the east from the southwestern corner of the UTM grid square. The second set is how far north it is. So a full 10 digit coordinate has one meter precision. Now that's close enough to confidently put a JDAM on target without ever having seen it. Pretty cool, eh? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Thanks for the explanation. Okay. Different speeds. I'd appreciate going through differences between ground, true, and indicated speed once again. Okay, so in order to fully explain this, we first need to do some math with lots of brackets and square roots. But I'll try to do this in a simplified way. Indicated airspeed, or IAS, is the speed reading uncorrected for instrument, position, and other errors. Basically, it's your pitot tube reading, and it's usually calibrated to reflect the pressure at sea level. Now, true airspeed is the actual speed of air going over the wings of the aircraft. Now, in order to get it, you take your indicated airspeed and add corrections for position error, instrument error, compressibility error, and density error. Finally, ground speed is your speed in relation to the ground and not the air. You get it by taking true airspeed and adding or subtracting the wind speed. Note the ground speed only common reading for planes traveling at different altitudes. So if you want to synchronize your speed with other assets, use ground speed for that. Lastly, and most importantly, we use indicated airspeed for all of our performance data. So our takeoff, landing, stall, and all of your other speeds will be in terms of indicated airspeed. Okay. Magnetic. 
so magnetic variation is around 12 degrees in these parts. Hey firm, I realize you probably already know all of this, but since you asked, I'll go over it anyway. So magnetic variation is the difference between magnetic north or the direction a magnetic compass needle points to and true north, which is the direction along the meridian towards the north pole. Ich glaube, ich habe das so größtenteils verstanden. Alright, staying on the AAP, the tier setting will give you all of the important information about your current tier point. The image in the left column shows the image or desired magnetic heading, which is wind correct. Below that, you will find the distance, elevation, and bearing to the tier point, which can also be changed to show the radial from the tier point on which you currently fly. Meint er jetzt das hier oder meint er das hier? AP. Okay. Got it. The right column shows time to go and desired time on target. The second option is especially useful if you want to coordinate with other assets. Plan on practicing it in one of the coming sources. If you set up a desired time on target, you will also be shown a speed required to arrive at exactly the specified time. Finally, you can see the current wind strength and direction. Have a look at it and let me know when you're ready to move on. Würde ich gerne noch mal hören. Could you repeat the last part for me, please? So, this is a handy way to display the magnetic heading, distance, and time to go to three different points. The top right will show that information for the currently set waypoint. The bottom right is for the anchor point, while the bottom left gives you information about the steer point. The lines on the left side allow you to select the waypoint or mark point by either entering its number or letter, or by using the scratch pad to type in the name. And that's all for the right knob. When you're ready, let me know and we'll move on to the zero point dial. Okay. Okay, good Morning, to go. autopilot. Okay, now we will briefly cover the flight plan fundamentals. So take a look at the left selector knob on the AAP. This is known as the steer point dial, and it should be in the flight plan position. In this mode, you will see the whole flight plan displayed on the tab, with waypoints connected by a green line. Oh, yeah, it does. Uh... Green lines connecting waypoints together are known as waypoint lines for some weird reason. You may need to decrease the scale of your tab or zoom out to see the entire flight plan. Now in order to do so, you first have to make it soy by long pressing the coolie hat on your throttle to the 
left or right, depending on which MSCP is currently displaying the TAD. Or, you can sort the TAD by pressing whichever OSB corresponds to where it says TAD. After you have the TAD set as SOI, then press down on the data management switch, or DMS down, on the stick to increase the range and zoom out. Conversely, pressing up will decrease the range. So I'd like you to now move the zoom out on the TAD until you can see your flight plan in its entirety and give me a heads up when you're caught up. Yo, hab ich. Okay, I decreased the scale of the TAD to the point that I can see my entire flight plan. Right on. The CDU will default into automatic flight plan sequencing. In this mode, the waypoints will automatically switch to the next one once you pass the previous one. There are applications where this is not desirable, and we'll go over them later on. Following so far? Uh, yeah. Ich fliege jetzt gerade, aber ich habe dafür nicht den, den, ich nicht den richtigen Weg von ausgewählt, glaube ich. Denn wir waren ja eigentlich bei Wegpunkt 3. Genau. Ist jetzt auf. Da gab es irgendwo eine Einstellung für, für Manual und Automatic, aber sagt ja, es kommt später, yeah. glaube ich. If I'm tracking and as I understand it, in this mode, the TAD will only display waypoints that are part of the flight plan, right? Even if I have more waypoints stored in the CDU. Exactly. Remember that the system can store up to 2050 waypoints with those numbered 1 through 50 called mission waypoints. The rest, numbering 51 through 2050, are called navigation waypoints. You will notice that part of the navigation waypoints are already assigned to airfields and cannot be edited, but we'll get back to that on tomorrow's story. On top of all that, we also have our mark points, which are labeled with letters. These will go from A to Z, while allowing you to use 25 of the available 26 letters. Oh, and one more thing to remember, that when in flight plan mode, you will only be able to move through the waypoints which are part of the flight plan. Okay. You won't be able to set anything that is not in the flight plan as your steer point. Verstanden. Why can't you use all 26? I didn't catch that. One more time, please. Yeah, why can we use only 25 out of 26? I guess that I should have said you can only add up to 25 mark points manually. Mark point Zulu is set automatically as a marker for the site of your last weapon's employment. Mark point Z is a very handy thing, but that is a lesson for another day. Okay. Okay, copy that. Da bin ich gespannt. Now, if you want to display mark points, you're going to need that left selector knob in the position labeled, you guessed it, mark. You should not have any mark points stored in the system at this point, but we'll cover their use on another story, as they are mostly used for marking targets. Alright, got it. The third position is marked mission, and it will give you access to your entire waypoint database. Go ahead and move the switch into the mission position now, please. Done. Good. Take a look at your TAD. You'll see the green line has disappeared and all of the mission waypoints are shown. Now we haven't added any additional waypoints to those that were part of your original flight plan, so the total number remains the same. As you can see, the navigation waypoints are not displayed in this mode, but you can cycle through them. There are many ways to do that, but we'll use the remaining button on the AAP, which we have not covered so far, the steer point toggle switch. By pressing it up or down, you can change your selected steer point. Go ahead and cycle it up until you get an hour. Steer point toggle switch. Ach so, ich glaube, das ist der hier, ne? Ja, warum soll ich den benutzen? Wenn ich auch... Äh ja gut. Aber es geht. Okay, now I'm set up my steer point now. Word. To wrap up today's training, Sorty, let's talk about the HUD. Before we do that, though, let's turn back towards Sally. So pull up and turn towards waypoint four.
turn to Angel 10 and let's try and keep between 0 and 50, please. Ich hab mir richtig zugehört, leider. Press spacebar when you are at 10,000 feet and cross to waypoint 4 flying 2020 knots. Four können wir uns erstmal holen. Das ist dann der und der müsste da hinten sein. Und ich fahre Autopilot aus. Drehe eine Kurve, gehe auf 10.000. Also sinke dabei ein bisschen. Okay. Das müsste passen. On autopilot engage. Two is on course for Mopa and at Angels 10. Let's talk about those HUD things. Fair enough. So I left this lesson for the end. I don't think there's a big difference between the HUD and the Alpha and Charlie, so we can go over it pretty quickly. Still, I have to go through the part that's important for navigation just to be sure no stones are left unturned. So when you're ready, let's do it. Yeah, what's up? Yes. jetzt hier auf einmal. Das ist neu, dass hier die Master Caution blinkt. Aber oh, wir haben keinen Sprit mehr. Okay.
Ready to move on. Okay. My speed and altitude covered when you need to move on. Make sure you're in nav mode if you would, please. Your steer point is shown as a small square on your HUD. You'll also notice that there is a line extending from the TVB towards it. If the steer point is outside of the HUD field of view, the designation queue will change. Go ahead and turn 90 degrees to the left and observe the marking on your HUD. And let me know what you can see. When you have turned 90 degrees from your current waypoint... Okay, stand da in welche Richtung? Ne, aber ist doch anders. Warning, egal. Autopilot. Steerpoint Square now has a number above and below it, and it's just sitting on the side of the HUD. And the line coming out of the box is now attached to the TVV. Genau. Yep. Okay, that line is pointing in the direction towards the steer point off of the TVV. This line is known as the C line. It is worth noting that the C line is not exclusive to the TVV and steer point, but that's a lesson for another time. Okay, so the box that is nailed to the side of the HUD is showing you which side of the jet the steer point is on. The number at the top is how many degrees off that side the steer point is, and the bottom number represents how many miles you are away from that steer point. So for instance, that box was on the right side of my HUD and had a 120 on top and 13 below, Morning, I know that the is off by 4 o'clock and 13 miles behind me. Okay, return to course now please and let me know when we can continue. Okay. Two's on course. Good. On to the final part. So some more information can be found in the bottom right corner of the HUD pertaining to our steer point. And that's going to be just below the radar altimeter. The first line shows the steer point number and ID. As I've told you before, numbers from 1 to 50 are reserved for mission waypoints. 51 to 2050 are for navigation waypoints. And letters A to Z are for mark points. And the ID is going to be whatever you've named that waypoint, like Vincent, IP, or whatever, okay? Climb yep, moment. copy that. The second line shows distance to steer point and target elevation. The first part is self-explanatory, the second one we'll cover in detail during weapons training, but for now, it's showing the elevation source as DTS. We can manually input our target's elevation, which will be displayed instead of DTS. All right. The third line shows you time to go and time on target delta. Time to go simply shows how long it will take you to arrive at the steer point with your current speed. Time on target delta will only work if you have set the desired time on target, which is something we're going to be covering tomorrow. Looks like tomorrow's sortie will be pretty intensive. Yes, we'll do a lot of practical exercises. On the ground, you'll build your own flight plan, and then in the air, we'll practice waypoint attributes, creating new waypoints and mark points, changing anchor points, and using the desired time on target function. Oha. Uh, I can't wait. Just make sure you're well prepared and read all the operating manuals for navigation, okay? Yeah, copy. Okay, the last line shows the current time, but it can also be used for a time hack. It is a good way to synchronize the action with other assets combination with desired time on target or separately. However, it's a bit counterintuitive when you use it for the first time, so let's go through the process before trying it out. Ready? All right, I'm ready. We will do a one minute hack. So press the hack button once and type zero one zero zero on your and press enter on your USD. Once you do that, press hack again to return to normal mode. The system will now remember the last value you put in, so if you press the hack button again, it will show it on the HUD and immediately start counting down in the background. In the remaining time, you should press enter. If you want to start over, press hack again. Are you following? Okay. Ähm, ich habe aber irgendwie ein Problem mit meiner mit meiner rechten Engine. 
Ich weiß gar nicht, ob ich die einfach während des Flugs neu starten kann. Die macht, die hat keine Leistung mehr. Ich probiere das jetzt mal kurz aus. Ich gehe mal ins Idle mit ihr. Ich mache die mal aus und wieder an. Gucken, ob sie noch mal wieder an, ob sie noch mal wieder läuft. Was hat sie denn? Ölpress, Fuelpress. Irgendwas. Na, wir werden es auch so hinkriegen. Läuft auch mit nur einem Triebwerk. Ich check nur nicht, was sie hat. Dass mir das Triebwerk flöten geht. Läuft nur noch im Idle. Das heißt, wir haben auch weniger Strom. Okay, jetzt hat er gesagt, äh, zero, hack, zero, one, zero, 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 hack, enter, nee, ich sage, ich frage jetzt nochmal, ob er mir das nochmal sagen kann. Could you repeat the last part for me, please? Clear, hier ist clear. Um, hack, hack. Zero, one, zero, zero, zero. Enter. Jetzt soll ich nochmal hack. Ach, keine Ahnung. Bin ich mich sicher, was yep, das soll? Go on. Okay, when I say hack, just press the hack button once, then enter to see the remaining time. Give it a try a couple of times and let me know when you're ready. Ja, okay. Ich glaube, ich hab's. Okay, good to go. Warning, Autopilot. Hin. Now. All 
Warning, autopilot. Ist er jetzt geblieben hinter mir? Hey Biff, when we were going through the HUD, you said that you've been told that there was no big difference between the A and the Charlie. So, have you not flown on the A's before? zu Blackjack on UHF Radio. Muss ich mal kurz gucken, was Blackjack war. 377 800. So Mist, ich stieg jetzt hier gerade noch mit einem Blackjack, Triebwerk. Achso, ich bin sogar noch dran. And once you have stored down, turn to contact approach. 291725. Approach. One copies. Moment. Ah, oh, fuck. 291725. Approach Devil 1 west of Moapa inbound for landing with information. Muss ich denn noch? Nicht mehr so weit. John ist Mopa. Dürfte Nellis auch nicht mehr so weit weg sein. Er ist nicht mehr so weit. 2-1 left. Keine Ahnung, warum jetzt hier ein Triebwerk flöten gegangen ist. Warning, Autopilot. Ne, Autopilot geht jetzt nicht. Ich muss jetzt selber dahin fliegen. Hm. Aber fliegt sich eigentlich noch ganz okay. Mit einem Triebwerk. Wird es ein bisschen länger dauern. Hm. Wo siehst du auch nicht ganz im roten Bereich? Ähm, kann man ein bisschen mehr Gas geben. Geht mal was. So, das ist Mopa.
Mhm. Und ja, jetzt sind wir Mupa vorbei. Und Nellis, müssen wir mal schauen. Ist das hier die. Das müsste die 1 sein, ne? Ne, ich kann jetzt mal in Richtung 5 fliegen oder so. Ich bin auf dem falschen. Ich brauche die 5. Äh, ich brauche die 0. Die 0 müsste. Die, warte, wo ist die 5? Was ist die 5? Die ist jetzt hier. der Truckstop. Da will er gleich hovern. Hm, hovern sage ich schon. Kreisen. Wird auch gerade dunkel, würde ich sagen. Okay, also das hat mich jetzt hier ein bisschen aus dem Konzept gebracht, dass mir hier das rechte Triebwerk einfach mal ab, ab äh, stirbt. Aber ich bin schon so gespannt auf äh, echte Gefechtseinsätze mit dem Teil, weil da unglaublich viel geiler Spielkram ist. Also die Markpoints, die man sich setzen kann, dann gemeinsam im Multiplayer vielleicht, in einem Flight, sich da irgendwelche Ziele sozusagen designieren und zuweisen. Die ganzen Waffen, die man dran setzen kann. Die, ähm, cooles Navigationssystem. Echt geil. So, 11.000, ich gehe jetzt langsam mal runter am Truckstop. War das nennt es nicht gleich da vorne sogar schon? Two one left. War, machen wir einen, einen direkten, eine direkte Landung? Muss ich mal ganz kurz gucken. 2, 1. Wir landen von, von hier. 2, 1 left. Ich lande einfach direkt. Uh. Ich, ich meine, mein, mein Triebwerk ist im Arsch. Ich mache jetzt keine. Ich mache jetzt keinen Overhead Approach und so. Ich, ich lande ausnahmsweise mal direkt. Dunkel hier. Können wir mal ein bisschen Licht anmachen. Ja, Nachteinsätze soll es ja auch ganz gut können. Bin auch gespannt drauf. So, haben wir gleich die 5. Den guten alten Truckstop. Vor Las Vegas. Genau.
Okay. Da ich bin auch zu hoch. Gut, ich gehe jetzt direkt in den Landung. Roger, Contact Tower for Devil One. See ya. Tower 3 Trues 3 Trues 7 7 Oh, ich komme ja schon wieder scheiße rein Dallas Tower, Devil 1 1, Runway 2 1 left, full stop Devil 1 1, Wind is 0 2 8 from 1 0, check landing gear, clear to land, Runway 2 1 left Clear to land, 2 1 left, Devil 1 1 Okay, landing gear raus langsamer da wie ruhig noch werden. Licht hat er auch nicht an. Oha, da muss ich auch noch mehr. Das muss ich mir auch noch mal angucken. Okay. Lappen wir auch nicht raus, auf Halt. Ein bisschen bremsen würde ich sagen. Doch noch ein bisschen sehr schnell. Altitude, Altitude. Ich weiß. So, Klappen raus. Eigentlich sieht das gar nicht so schlecht aus. Ein bisschen schnell vielleicht. Oh, 2000 Fuß war ein bisschen hoch. Ein bisschen hoch, die Körper noch. So ist gut. So, jetzt gehe ich ins Idle. Och, guck mal. Ganz entspannt aufgesetzt. Okay, I'm safe on the deck. Luftbremse raus. Roger, taxi back to center and I'll catch up with you there. Devil 1-1, contact ground on 257.8. Roger, contacting ground on 257.8, Devil 1-1. Guck mal, wir müssen die Bremse hier. Nellis Tower, Devil 1-2, on final for runway 2. Devil 1-2, Windsor is 0-2-8 for 1-0. Check landing gear, you are clear to land, runway 2-1-1. Clear to land, 2-1-1 left, Devil 1-2. 275. Wow. Moment, 275, 800. When you enter Alpha. Ist das Alpha? That's Alpha. Very nice. Irgendwas stimmt hier jedenfalls nicht. Ich kriege hier auch eine Master Caution gerade rein. Nellis Ground, Double 1-1, one, one, vacating 2-1 left via Alpha. Golf, Taxi, Alpha, Charlie. Golf, Charlie for Devil 1-1. Okay. GC for Thunder. Okay, one, proceed with the after landing, then shut down procedure. Good job today. Make sure you get ready for tomorrow's sorties. We'll cover a lot of practical stuff. Oi, 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 oi. Roger, can't wait. Okay, we're coming up to Alpha. <laughs> that's the spirit. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks, Kermit. Oh, one more thing. We need to knock 
out your ILS stuff and weather and thing. We may get some nasty in the coming days. If we get some soup, inspection, screw up, whatever we have planned to take advantage of that rare non-sunny day for your ILS stuff. Okay. Yeah, see you, boss. And thanks. Okay, Leute. Um, das war's. Würde ich sagen. Bis zum nächsten Mal.